It's time for really quick equity and excellence in teaching tips. I am your host, Michelle Singh, an educator, professor, author, student, and mother. I'm happy to share this topic from the Equal Methodology, which is a framework for diversity, equity, and inclusion in education. So let's get right into our conversation. Are you tired of the one size fits all approach to education that leaves some students behind? Former US Secretary of Education, John B. King Jr. says that personalized learning levels the playing field, giving all students an equal opportunity to succeed by providing them with customized learning experiences that meet their unique needs and abilities. One of the most cherished memories from my school days is related to personalized learning. It was during my sixth grade year when our teacher, Dr. Connor Miller, assigned us a writing project. It was a poetry project to be specific. I vividly remember the excitement that I felt as I was given the freedom to choose my own topic. And I decided to explore the work of Tupac Shakur, a poet and rapper I had grown to admire. And Dr. Connor Miller supported my choice and encouraged me to create a, a mini book about his poetry while also writing my own pieces in a similar style. As I worked on this project, I, I did feel a sense of ownership and, and pride over the work that I was doing. It was as if my teacher had given me that permission that I needed to be creative and to, to really express myself in a way that was true to who I was. Now, years have passed, obviously, since that project, but I still have that mini book stored away safely with my high school memory book and yearbook and, and, and some other important items. And looking back on this experience, I realized how much personalized learning has impacted me as a teacher and even as a learner. It, it helped me to discover my interests and my strengths and, and it gave me the confidence to really pursue my passions. And this is just one example of, of how personalized learning can have an impact on students. When teachers give students the freedom to choose their own topics or their own way of expressing themselves, they're really likely to feel invested in their learning and motivated to do their best work the students are. And, and this can lead to greater engagement, better academic outcomes for sure, and a sense of fulfillment in, in, their, in their educational journey. So achieving equity in education has been an ongoing challenge, but personalized learning has shown to be a promising approach toward achieving equity. Personalized learning is important for equity because it takes into account the individual needs and interests and, and abilities of each student, rather than assuming that one size fits all is sufficient. So according to the research, personalized learning can improve academic outcomes and, and address the achievement gap, and, and it can have copious benefits for students from diverse backgrounds, including students with disabilities and students who are second language or English language learners. In addition, there was a report by the National Education Association that found that personalized learning can ensure that all students, regardless of income, receive a high quality education by providing customized learning experiences that meet the unique needs and abilities of students, of each student. Personalized learning can help to level the playing field and achieve equity in education. So for today's talk, I wanna share three ways that personalized learning can help to foster a more equitable educational environment. Number one is personalized learning can help to build quality relationships with students. Number two is personalized learning can provide students with choice over their learning. Number three, personalized learning can encourage the use of technology to support learning and assessments. So let's jump into topic number one, building quality relationships with students. Imagine a student, who, a student who walks into a classroom feeling like just another face in the crowd. They may feel like no one understands their unique strengths and interests or needs. But what if the teacher took the time to build quality relationships with that student and others like them? What if they got to know them as individuals and, and tailored their instruction to meet those specific needs? The research shows that personalized learning that focuses on building strong relationships with students can have a profound impact 
on the student's success. Students who feel a sense of connection with their teacher and peers are more likely to engage in the learning, persist when they face challenges, and of course, achieve higher academic outcomes. So here are specific examples of how teachers can build those quality relationships with their students in the classroom. Number one is a simple yet effective way. Uh, a, a simple yet effective way is just by greeting the students by their name, by taking the time to learn how to, to not just to learn their names, but how to learn how to pronounce their names and, and use their names and, and make students feel seen and valued and, as individuals by greeting them with their name. Number two is building relationships with students by engaging in meaningful conversations that go beyond just, you know, just the academic topics, right? By asking students about their interests and their hobbies and their experiences, their extracurricular activities, you can really show that you care about them as individuals. You can also use collaborative learning activities that can help students build relationships with each other and also build relationships with you. When, you, when everyone's working together on projects and assignments, they're learning from each other and developing that sense of community in the classroom. Number four is teachers can show that they care about their students by really showing their interest in the, in the students' lives outside of school, right? So whether it's attending games or extracurricular activities or events, or by asking about their, their hobbies or their families, really you can try to build a connection with students that go beyond the, the, the academics of the classroom. And number five is you can build relationships with students by providing feedback and providing support that is tailored to their individual needs. Uh, when you're acknowledging the students' efforts and the progress that they are making and, and providing guidance and resources, right? It could be a quick link to a Khan Academy video to support something that they need, just that little push in, right? So you're providing resources and, 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 and guidance to help them improve and you're building that trust with them and helping them feel supported in their learning. So in short, promoting equity through personalized learning does require building strong, positive relationships with students. And this is a crucial step in creating an inclusive and supportive learning environment that helps all students to thrive, to really reach their, their full potential. So now that we've talked about relationships, let's jump into topic number two, which is choice. Think of a classroom where students have a say in what they learn and how they learn it, right? Where they have the freedom to pursue their passions and take ownership of their education. This is the magic of personalized learning. When students are given choice in their learning, they are more likely to feel invested and engaged in the process. And instead of feeling like passive recipients of information, they become active participants in their education. So for example, in one classroom, a teacher may allow students to choose their own project topic. A student who is passionate about animals might choose to research the effects of climate change on endangered species, while another student who loves music might choose to create a music video using multimedia technology that explores the jazz history um, of our country. Now, research has shown that providing students with choice can have a positive impact on their motivation and their achievement, and students who are given choice in their learning report higher levels of engagement and enjoyment, joy, 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 joy in their work. They also demonstrate higher levels of academic performance. So when you provide students with choice, it can, it can take many forms. It can look many different ways. You can offer multiple options for assignments and even multiple options for assessments where you're allowing the students to maybe choose a writing prompt or a project format that aligns with their learning preferences or their interests, right? They can, um, this can be, you know, student-led discussions, right? Where you're giving the students the opportunity to direct and focus on class conversations and, and kind of that community building Okay, you can provide flexible learning environments where you're allowing students to work individually or work in small groups and you can incorporate student interests and passions within the curriculum itself. So when students feel, you know, that sense of agency and control over their learning, they are more likely to be invested in the process and more motivated to succeed. And by incorporating choice and autonomy into the classroom, Teachers can really promote equity and, and create a learning environment that fosters engagement and motivation and achievement, right? So we've talked a bit about choice. We're gonna move on to topic number three, one of my faves, tech. Technology, 
has immense potential. It can be a game changer in education, particularly for students who may have faced barriers to learning through traditional methods. Students who may have, ha may have struggled to keep up with the pace of the traditional classroom can now learn at their own pace and technology can be used to personalize this instruction for them and so that it can meet their unique needs so that they are able to succeed. And this again can level the playing field and ensure that all students have access to resources and support that can help them thrive in their learning environments. So by embracing technology in the classroom, you can provide a more engaging and effective learning experience for all students, regardless of their backgrounds or even their learning styles or preferences. So we're gonna go real quick through quite a few ways that technology can be used in the classroom and, and what the different types of technology looks like in the classroom. Um, so number one is personalized learning software like Edgenuity or Carnegie, Carnegie Learning. This is, uh, these are examples of um, what students can participate in that can really achieve, improve their achievement, right? Because these are those platforms that allow them to learn at their own pace. Uh, then there are online educational resources like Khan Academy or TED Ed that provide students with access to just a wider range of topics and learning materials and opportunities to explore things that may interest them. And then there are learning management systems like maybe your school uses Canvas or, or Schoology, but those LN LMSs, learning management systems, can help you manage the assignments and provide real-time feedback and even personalize the instruction that meets the individual needs of students within those LMSs. And then there's gamification or you know, and educational games like Minecraft Education Edition, like Kahoot or Quiz Is or GimKit, which, which all of these can engage students in learning and help them develop those critical thinking and problem solving skills. Then there are digital por portfolios like Seesaw or even OneNote, right? You can create portfolios with OneNote that can provide students with opportunities to reflect on their learning and showcase their work while also providing you with insights into the student's progress over time. And then there are formative assessment tools like Quizlet and Socrative and, and even Nearpod that, can, that you can use to quickly and easily gather feedback and assess students in different ways uh, to check their understanding of the content. And these tools allow you to, you know, whether you're creating quizzes or polls or surveys or open-ended questions, whatever those are, the students can answer right away using their own devices. And it does provide that real-time feedback to you that you can also turn around and provide to the students. And then there are online discussion tools like Microsoft Flip. Um, there are collaborative editing tools like Wakelet or even just Google Docs, right? Or, you know, if you're using Word Online or PowerPoint Online or, or Slides or whatever your options are for those collaborative um, editing tools, but you're providing that space for students to engage in those discussions and to work on uh, projects and activities together with their classmates in a way that is that is comfortable and accessible wherever they are, okay? Um, and then there are interactive boards like smart boards or Promethean boards that can be used, that you can use to create those dynamic and interactive lessons where they can display the content and you can annotate on the content. You could play videos and engage the students in an interactive way so that learning now becomes multimodal and multimedia. And then you have accessibility tools like text-to-speech software or closed captioning uh, or screen readers or alt text, right? That can make a world of difference for your students who have visual or auditory impairments. And this technology um, can really, really ensure that all students have access to the educational material that they, they need to succeed. So it's clear that technology will continue to play a critical role in supporting personalized learning and fostering equity in the classroom. And by leveraging these tools, uh, we can really help to ensure that every student has the resources and support that they need to succeed. So let's embrace the power of tech and create a more inclusive and equitable educational environment for all of our students and even for us as teachers as well. So we've just explored how personalized learning can harness the power of equity in education, helping all students achieve success. We've talked about three ways that personalized learning can foster a more 
equitable educational environment. And those three ways were number one, personalized learning can build quality, can help you to build quality relationships with your students. Number two, personalized learning can help you to provide students with choice over their learning. And number three, personalized learning can help you to use technology to support learning and assessment. So thank you for taking the time to listen and being open to learning about this topic. We appreciate you. We appreciate you being on this journey toward equity and excellence in teaching with us. So before you go, one last thing, personalized learning is a powerful tool that can help students reach their full potential and foster a more inclusive and equitable educational environment. It's up to all of us to unlock its potential and harness the power of equity. So I urge you today to take action. What is one way you will commit to supporting personalized learning and ensuring that all students have the opportunity to thrive? Let's work together to make a difference in the lives of our students and build a brighter future for all. Take care. The next move is on you. So let's put these ideas to work. Take time to implement and time to reflect. And don't forget to join the conversation. I invite you to share your thoughts and progress with our community online at LCTE Learning. You may even use the hashtag learn with LCTE. We look forward to engaging with you. Thank you for watching.